drivers told me, they says, hey, Bill, he says, uh, I don't know what to make of that. He says, gee whiz, he says, they've got all guys over there that can't speak any English. And he says, they got all brand new equipment. He says, everything they have is all brand new, you know. And uh, <laughs> they were they were concerned, you know, yeah. <laughs> Camera's on, so. Hey, the roof looks okay, doesn't it? Yeah. It they... didn't take it long for that. No, I tell you what, I've seen houses take longer. Oh, my. <laughs> I know, the roof was pressure. Yeah. Yeah, they, they got up there, stripped it Monday. Anytime. I mean, it is uh, 25 after, so. Uh, uh, it's on, so people can log in, so. Okay. So I got that. I didn't know that. Yeah, they tore it down to the woods. Oh, I thought they put it right over the old nope. shingle. Oh, that's a good way to do it. That's a better way. Where's the... Uh, uh, I didn't know that. Yep. Uh, you put new stuff underneath it. Yeah, felt. Uh -huh. Felt. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. yeah, I mean, they did an excellent job. I, I was impressed. Uh-huh. No, I didn't know it was a tear-off. I thought it was a little soft. But they, they had that all tore off and felt on. Uh -huh. Well, that's the best way to do it. They're off. They didn't have to replace any machine or anything. I, they did some, I heard some saws going, so there were some pieces that they had to put out. But when they tore it off, you know, there was nothing on there. There was a lot Why of patch work on there. So they tore the patch quite a bit. Oh, okay. Well, that church isn't brand new, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that wood's been there for a while. That's older than Grammy and I. Yeah. yeah. yeah.
Good morning. Good morning. Welcome, everybody. And uh, just letting you know that I'm glad you're doing some social distancing for me. You know. <laughs> but we're glad you're here, and I uh, hope we uh, have a great time, a great picnic planned, and I'm um, just glad that all of us see here. Uh, let's begin with a prayer, and then we'll go from there. Let's pray. Gracious God, we thank you for this beautiful day. We thank you for the your grace and love that is new each and every morning. And so we pray that as we come together, that your spirit will continue to uh, in, enlighten us, guide us as we worship you here today. We praise you in your name, in Christ's name we pray. Amen. So real quick, uh, a couple of announcements there on the bulletin. The Bible study is starting on the 22nd, and uh, we'll be doing looking at the book of Acts, and uh, six classes, and it's kind of different. It's not uh, the usual kind of study of the book where you say, okay, Paul went here, here, and here, and he did this and that. It's more about the speeches that Paul makes, the stories that are told, and uh, it's a video series as well as uh, teaching, and uh, we're going to do a 2 o'clock and a 7 o'clock. And also, if you want, uh, we'll do, uh, have a Zoom link so that you can Zoom in on it uh, and be able to be participate in that as well. Um, don't forget the free skin cancer, which is uh, Saturday. And uh, anybody else have any other announcements? Bobby does. See, you, if you sat closer, you wouldn't have to watch it. <laughs> there was no point. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Kids can play in the playground, but your adults have to pay attention. Okay? <laughs> All right, sorry. Um, I, don't, I never do microphones well because I'm too loud. Anyways, two announcements. One, it's not in the bulletin, but you probably saw it in the newsletter. We're starting the Heifer Fund today. That is the one, we, you know, we kind of took a break last year because it was a little bit weird, right? But um, we're starting that up. We're going to run it for three months. I think typically you guys probably remember that I would do it in the springtime. We do it kind of in collaboration with Easter. Do it a month. We're trying to mix it up given the times and everybody's comfortability level. And so it's going to be spread out through a series of three months. You'll probably see some things I'll give to Pastor Howard in the service. Um, but really, the big goal is we're just trying to serve others, and I think you guys remember people would do various projects, and we would try to support them in that. So if kids, if adults, I'm trying to kind of think of my own ideas, have any service projects, and they want the church to know about it, please let me know, because I'll throw that into the bulletin and publicize it, whether it's a bake sale, um, you know, one time my nephew Sean made those different sewing heating bags, let us know, and we'll definitely publicize that, and just give me a shout if you have any questions on that. Also, we are going to start the adult Sunday school next week. We're going to be studying Ephesians. Um, so, 9.30, come on around. I think I'm going to talk to Pastor Howard. Last year we offered uh -oh. Zoom, too, just in case people had to stay home and couldn't make it as well. But we're going to start it. We would love to have you. It's a great group of people, and I think we all kind of learned something new. So, have a good one. Thanks. Thank you, Bobby. And uh, in connection to that... Um, the uh, junior church will not start next week, but the week after that, uh, as they're getting ready. So keep that in mind. The junior church will start in two Sundays from now. All right? Anything else? Yes. Just a quick announcement to everyone out there. Uh, next Sunday, we are going to start our choir practices. I'd like to invite anybody to come to that. Uh, we're going to practice before uh, church. And after church, you don't have to come to both if you don't want to. You can come to one or the other. Um, and we're going to start probably between 10 o'clock and 10 10 uh, before church. And after uh, the service, we'll practice for about 15 minutes on uh, our first Sunday that we'll plan to sing is the 26th of September. So we hope to see a lot of you there. Thank you. All right, we're going to sing our first song, Oh Master, Let Me Walk With Thee. Yep. Like I said, E servants of God. We're gonna sing E servants of God. <laughs>
And then let's sing, Oh Master, Let Me Walk With Thee. So if the kids want to come down here, I have something for them to hold on to. And uh, while we're doing, waiting for that, um, Vanessa is uh, is ill today. So keep her and Emily in her prayers as they are having some health problems. So uh, she won't be singing. Given everybody what's called utensils. Now, I'm sure you've probably seen these in your mom's and dad's kitchens. You know, they have different jobs, huh? What you know what this is? That's a spatula, yeah. And you know what that one is? No, you don't know what that one is? That's a potato smasher. You smash potatoes with it. Now you know what you use a wooden spoon for? My mom used it to give us lickings. But you use it to stir. Yeah, you stir stuff with it. What? What's this one? Yeah, it's a whisk. Yeah, whisking. And I have a ladle, and I think my uh, what is that called? A spatula. Yeah, another spatula. But you don't use it for a shovel, but that's okay. <laughs> so what I wanted to talk about is what if I use this to flip eggs? No, nah, that wouldn't work, would it? But well, this one would be good for flipping eggs, right? No. Yeah, right, the spatula flips eggs. What if you use that to um, get soup out of a pot? No, that won't work. This one would work good for soup out of a pot, huh? No. This, the ladle. Yeah. And um, this the, makes things floppy. That wouldn't work with that. The wooden spoon, you know, they all have special jobs, okay? And sure, yeah, you know, you could probably try to flip an egg with a ladle, but it's just not going to look nice. So it's better to use the tools that, you know, they're intended for. And this is a great reminder for us, because each one of you have, you know, special talents and abilities, you know, and special experiences, like bees chasing you. 
good? Okay. And all those kind of things that God can use you in a very special way. You know, you're not going to, not all of you are going to be preachers, front. Not all of you are going to sing during church. Not all of you are going to, you know, put a roof on a church building. But we all have special talents and abilities that we can share with God. And so it's okay that mine's different. My talent's different than yours. Because God's going to be able to use that. All right? Let's pray. God, we thank you for all the gifts and talents that we have that we can share uh, with other people. That we can share the love and grace that is in Jesus Christ. Remind us and help encourage us to use our gifts and talents in a way that brings glory and honor to your name. Amen. We're going to sing O oh, for a Thousand Tongues. here at the park, time of uh, beginning a new season for the church, kind of uh, with a Sunday school and Bible study and just kind of getting things back in way, we thank you. We thank you for the opportunity to be a part of our church, to serve, to proclaim your love in so many different ways. And so Lord, as we gather here and as we have sung some songs and praised you, as we have uh, reconnected with one another and told our stories, laughed and shared, we pray that you will continue to be with us as a congregation as we serve you and as we live for you. We thank you for the opportunities that we have. And we pray for those um, ministries that uh, we shared about Bible study and Sunday school and the Heifer project. And we pray that um, you will guide us as we use uh, our gifts and talents to uh, extend your kingdom beyond our, our doors. And Lord, we look to you to also to continue to care for us. We've seen you at work in so many great ways, and so we are comforted by your presence, whether we are going through difficult times, difficult relationships, problems even at work. We thank you that uh, we can find strength uh, in your presence in our lives. We pray for those who are going through health issues and who are uh, in homes and uh, unable to come to church. We ask that you will give them uh, strength, your healing power as well. 
guide and direct them especially and their families who uh, take care of them we pray for those caretakers uh, whether they're part of the family or not they give so much uh, to people in our lives and Lord we continue to think about uh, 9-11 and uh, we've heard a lot about it in this past weekend and on this 20th anniversary we thank you for uh, the freedoms that we have. We thank you for the, the men and women who are willing to, to serve uh, our lives in so many different ways. And we continue to think of those who uh, lost their lives, the families now who are continuing to live uh, out their lives. Um, we pray for them and help them out in their just time of uh, mourning. Lord, we come before you too and we thank you for your presence in our lives, in our nation, and in our community. Guide and direct us as we continue to live within our communities and to be servants in so many ways. Lord, we give you thanks for this time, this place, and this celebration. And we continue to pray the prayer that you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So our, our scripture today is taken from Matthew 20, verse 20 through 28. And it's kind of an interesting scripture. It's kind of a, a theme that really is contrary to what Jesus was teaching and, and trying to get across to his disciples. So I think it's a great lesson even today. The mother of Zebedee's son came to Jesus with her sons, kneeling down and asked, a favor of Jesus. What is it you want, he asked. She said, Grant that one of these two sons of mine may sit at your right and the other at your left in your kingdom. You don't know what you're asking, Jesus said to them. Can you drink the cup that I'm going to drink? We can, he answered. Jesus said to them, You will indeed drink from the cup, but to sit by my right and left is not for me to grant. These places belong to those whom have been prepared by my father. When the ten heard about this, they were indignant with the two brothers. And Jesus called them together and said, You know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord over them, and their high officials exercise authority over them. Not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wants to be first must be your servant. So as the Lord, or as the Son of Man, did not come to be served, but to serve, to give his life for a ransom of many. So I got a couple of little thoughts, a kind of a Jeff Foxworthy thing here. You might be addicted to Amazon if you receive a wedding invitation from one of their drivers. You might be addicted to Amazon if you take it as a personal insult when you see an Amazon truck and it doesn't stop at your house. You might be addicted to Amazon if you have your spouse and Amazon listed as your emergency contact. And you might be addicted to Amazon if when you are telling your family that you're not addicted to Amazon, when you're interrupted by an alert that tells you that your Amazon package has arrived. Now, Amazon was not the first to make us a consumer place. Desire to get things and want things. We've been doing that long before Amazon started. They just tapped into a kind of an idea that we have that we need to get stuff. We want stuff. Even if we don't need 
that stuff. We still want it. And so it's that kind of that consumerism that is so much a part of our lives. And, you know, one of the interesting things I remember back uh, when 9-11 happened was that, you know, everybody was worried about the economy collapsing because of, you know, the World Trade Center collapsing and falling and all the ramifications of that. And I remember President Bush, one of his suggestions for dealing with the economy and dealing with 9-11 and dealing with the terrorists was go out and buy something. And I thought, is that really the solution to these problems? this more consumerism that we have in our lives, we were not created to just be consumers in our lives. You know, God gave us much more to do. God created us to serve, and to serve Him and to serve others. Just as our, our verse in Matthew 20 pointed out, you know, Jesus came not to be served, but to serve. And so that's, in a sense, our calling as a church and as Christians and followers of Christ. Now, I, I find it interesting that actually the first sin that was committed was basically consumerism. If you look at uh, Genesis chapter 2, verse 15, God told Adam, he said, look, I give you this whole garden, and I want you to work it. So our first call, our first responsibility was to work in the Garden of Eden. Now, yeah, we know that it was perfect and wonderful, but this is still one of our first purposes was to give back, to serve, to uh, take care of what God had created. Even when woman was made in the scriptures, it says that she was a helper. Now, a lot of times we think that she was Adam's helper, but I think that really what the scripture is saying was both of them together were helpers serving God in the Garden of Eden, working the garden as they first uh, were created to do. But then comes that first sin. The serpent advertises to Eve and Adam the benefits of eating that fruit. The fruit that God said, you don't need that. Now think about it. Think about the commercials we see on TV. I think the vast majority of the stuff that's on TV, the more stuff that's on TV, is the le least amount that you need. The more you see something on TV as a commercial, <clears throat> the reality is you don't need that. Do we need a brand new car right now? Do we need to upgrade our computers? Do we need to have that special insurance on our cars? so that we can get them fixed? Probably not. And so the serpent is the first advertising agent in the world. Because he looked at Adam and Eve and said, you know what? Yeah, you may not need this fruit, but you want it. It's going to make you cool. It's going to make you smart. It's going to make you be like God. Advertisers are doing the same thing even today. And so the serpent convinces Adam and Eve that they need that fruit. And so they click the button and Amazon delivers it. There it is. And the rest is history. The first sin is committed and Adam and Eve now have been kicked out of the garden. So even the beginning of the Bible tells us that you and I were created to serve. Created to give back. Now, for all of us, you know, we think that if we're created to serve and we're called to be these servants, we get kind of bogged down by that. Because we think that people who are called to do something for God are either, you know, pastors like myself, missionaries, nuns, or full-time church workers. But the Presbyterian theology has always had this idea about vocation. And vocation means that we serve God where we are in our work, no matter what work we do. It is an opportunity to serve God. We just don't work to get a paycheck. No matter what our jobs might be, there's always an opportunity for us to share what God has given to us. It is a vocation. So, 
whether you've got a master's in divinity or, you know, or go to a monastery or sit at home and watch TV, you have a vocation. You have an opportunity to live and serve God in this world. Now, when Jesus was talking with his disciples in this story, he was kind of laying that idea out for them. And I love this story because some of the stuff that's behind the scenes kind of intrigues me. You know, Jesus, you know, he's there teaching, and all of a sudden, this mother of two disciples comes up to him and asks him the question that if these sons of hers could be at the right and left hand of Jesus during the kingdom, have a place of authority. Well, let's just stop right there. How affected are these two boys going to be if it took their mother to ask Jesus if they could be have authority? You talk about a helicopter mom. You know, she's like dragging these kids. Come on, I don't want to go, mom. Come on, we're gonna we're gonna ask Jesus this question. And so they, you know, they have this mom who wants them to have a sense of authority. But Jesus points out that his kingdom is to serve, not to be served. Rick Warren in his book, uh, Purpose Driven Life, I love what he says. We are called to service, not serve us. Service, not serve us. That's what we're called to. We're called to help, called to be a part of changing the lives of people around us. But, you know, to be served feels a lot better. You know, we enjoy, you know, somebody taking care of us a lot of times or doing what we want them to do. But the reverse, serving another person, kind of is humbling. It's not comfortable. We're not really crazy about doing it all the time. You know, and it makes us feel uncomfortable. So to kind of illustrate that, everybody on their bulletin has a dot. Here we go. What I want you to do, those of you underneath the pavilion, come out here. I want everybody who has the similar dots, whether I can't remember what the colors are, green and blue or whatever, match yourself up with another person with the same dot color. So that means you have to get up from your seats and walk around. Okay, so get into those groups, and then I'll tell you what we're going to do next. Oh yeah, if you don't have a bulletin, then you're in your own group. Those who do not have a bulletin, you can stand in your own group. So all right, get in your groups, come a little closer, so I, can, I can't reach out here and move too far. Thank you. 
Can they go sit down now? Yeah, they can go sit down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Thanks, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> in our last hymn, we said, uh, let the poor say I am rich, let the weak say I am strong, because of what the Lord has done for us. And we can add to that what the Lord has done for us, because we have been reaching out to the poor, reaching out to the weak. Therefore, we can have a blessing. So Lord, we thank you for what
what you have given to us, our spiritual gifts, our hearts, our abilities, our experiences, and we ask that you will continue to guide us as uh, we serve you, as we continue to be your people in this world. We pray this in Christ's name. Amen. <coughs> We're done, then.